Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hey, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to another video. Now today we're at Ant's Community Garage, a DIY self-service garage located in the heart of Everett, Washington. And what we're actually gonna be working on today is my 1997 BMW 328i. So we should actually walk in here, give you guys a quick glimpse as to what the car looks like, but I'm very excited to show you guys what we have. Because in the last video, we just did the ECS tuning coilovers. So we have the car lowered. And now we're on to the next step of showcasing the wheels and tires that we got for this car. Now, this has been something that's been in the works for a while that I've been having to keep under wraps. And unfortunately, I had to wait a little bit extra longer because things were on back order. So what I have here is the Apex Arc 8. This is in the 17 by nine with a plus 30 offset. And for the E36 chassis, what we're gonna figure out real quick is how to actually fit these, which I'll show you here in a sec. But before we get into that, the Arc 8 is a great wheel because it's flow form, it's lightweight, and it's very applicable with a lot of Euro cars. So when it comes to any sort of E36, E30, or even E46 and beyond, it's a very popular option. And I mean, for me personally, this is like a dream setup. And then on top of that, we have the Falcon Azenis FK 460s. And we're actually gonna be taking this car to the track to showcase these tires in further detail. So the FK 460s are a great all season tire that you can use all year round. It's ultra high performance. So you can feel confident about this in multiple situations. Kind of think of it as like a jack of all trades tire without having to go with a full racing spec tire, something like a RT 660 or even the, the Azenis. RT 615s. I think the goal with the vert really is just to be able to put something on the car that makes it more aesthetically pleasing in something that I can take to the track. I don't want to really go too crazy with this one. Uh, a lot of people are very controversial about the convertibles because it has less chassis rigidity than something like the coupe or the sedan. And uh, I feel like for me, this is just a really experimental time for me to kind of have my fun with the vert. As you know, with the last car that we had on the channel, we had the 318i sedan. And then before that, actually in high school, I had a 318is coupe that I had to sell because I was getting in way too much trouble on the streets. So the vert, I feel like is just gonna be a good highway cruiser, something on the weekends that you could take out to the track and have some fun with. So this will be a good way just to showcase to you guys how we do that. The only problem is, is when you're running a nine inch wheel like this on an E36, is you're gonna run into a lot of fitment issues. With the advice that I got from Apex Wheels, and huge shout out to them, we kinda got a better glimpse into what it will actually take to be able to run something like this. So this is the original factory, tastefully clapped 16 inch wheels that we got on here, obviously. Yeah. Link in the description. So to get these to fit, we're gonna actually need to roll the fenders here. This will alleviate a lot of the issues that we're gonna have in the rear. And then when it comes to the fronts, what I actually have here too is I have a five millimeter spacer just in case we need it for the fronts. We may be able to get away with not having to run a five millimeter spacer. And I believe the reason why you need to run a spacer like that is because you need the wheel to be just slightly adjusted out so that it doesn't come in contact when you're at full lock. And that's an issue that becomes a little bit prevalent, especially when you're running an aggressive setup like this. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll tinker around with the fronts. I think I might be able to run a little bit of negative camber to get these to fit. This is really just an experimental way for us to see how we can really dial in the fitment with this. But we're only bumping it up from a 17 inch to a 16 inch wheel. So it, it, it shouldn't actually look too much terribly different. But I'm telling you, once we get this wider setup and we get it sitting right, it's gonna be very fun to take out to the track. But of course, I don't wanna rub the fenders off completely especially with the brand new tires. That would be really terrible. Okay, so before we start hammering away with the fender roller itself, we what we need to do is we need to focus on cleaning all this stuff out. So there's a whole bunch of debris and things that are just hiding underneath here. So when we get our light underneath here and you get up close, you can see all this debris and dirt and gunk that's over here. But what's nice is this has like a 45 degree bend in it already. So it should make rolling this a little bit easier. And I'm hoping that things will go smoother this way. But for now, it's just gonna be a real emphasis on making sure that this is very clean. You could do this with just taking like a trim puller or a flathead screwdriver and just knocking a lot of this stuff out using some brake cleaner degreaser. And then that will give us a clean surface to work with so that when we heat this up, it'll make sure that it's nice and even and smooth and consistent. And then on top of that too, I think what we'll need to also do is we'll need to take off this plastic trim or at least pop this out a little bit so that it doesn't completely melt to the actual fender itself. So 
it should go pretty quickly. Hoping that it doesn't give us too much trouble. It's just a matter of really being patient, taking your time when using the fender roller. So once we get this all hooked up, we'll just use these uh, lug bolts to be able to hook this up and show you guys all the adjustments here once we get this all prepped and ready to go. So we just spent some time cleaning this up. I took the trims off of the side just to avoid any melting of the plastic. And uh, Harrison, if you wanna get in here and show the people on the inside what we're looking at, this is what you kinda want the final result to be, you know, using a little bit of brake cleaner to get rid of as much debris as possible. But now we're working with a relatively cleaner surface. It doesn't have to be super duper perfect but you just wanna make sure that you're not like lighting debris on fire or having this stuff get in the way because of this lip that goes on the inside. What you essentially wanna do is you almost wanna fold this in because this edge is gonna be getting caught and is gonna cause the wheel to rub up against this. So we wanna prevent that from happening. So this is gonna be the stage now where we start applying heat. The biggest name of the game with this is really just patience. You know, maybe allocating around like 20 or 30 minutes per fender when you're doing the roll, it's better to go a lot slower than regretfully putting too much pressure and then causing something to crack, uh, the paint getting warped or the fender getting warped. That's gonna be much harder than you just being slow and steady and then getting it to the right place. So now this is just a matter of really sitting here, honing in on just uh, making sure we apply the adequate amount of heat and then we'll get rolling on this. We'll test fit the wheel, see how it looks on there. And then uh, hopefully we can kind of dial in the fitment and see how it goes. Okay, so Harrison and I, we're gonna do a little bit of tag teaming here where you're gonna be keeping the heat on while I go and try and do a pass. See if this kind of works. Usually, you know, in the instance, if you're by yourself, you can just like blast this with a bunch of heat, get it to the point where if you wanna touch it, you know, you put your hand on it for like a second or two and then if it's too hot, that means it's kind of at the perfect temperature for you to start rolling. But we'll, we'll give it a shot, see how it goes. All right. Try not to burn your fingers. No, you're not gonna burn my fingers, bro. You're all good. I don't wanna melt this before. <laughs> you're not gonna you melt really it. <laughs> you're all good. So uh, just to give you like a point of reference for like the amount of speed you wanna use when you're rolling this, I would say maybe like try and cover an inch a second. So just be very slow with it with an adequate amount of pressure. And this is gonna be most of your adjustment that's happening right here. And we're just gonna slowly push this across Feel the pressure without going too haywire with it because it's a slow roll. But you can even see when I roll off the, the metal portion of the fender that there's definitely an adequate amount of pressure. If you need to back off a little bit just to get back on, like in this case, we'll get back on track. And it feels, feels pretty toasty. We did it on this side but it's just definitely not enough for us to get any sort of clearance when we're low. I don't know how well it's gonna pick up here, but there is a huge amount that we would need to pull for this to not come in contact. So I think the idea here is to come in another day and we're gonna have to actually cut this portion out so that there is a smooth surface for us to be able to pull this out just a little bit, being able to file this down, getting some paint and making it look really nice and then being able to push this back down. Now for the fronts, the fronts are actually okay. The fronts could fit, but what we had to do is we had to max out the camber plates, which luckily we have on the ECS tuning coilovers. So this will actually be okay, but it's still poking out quite a bit. I think that we'll be able to run these in the front, but I think for now we're gonna have to run the stocks in the rear, come back another day and wrap all this up, which is very unfortunate. But just to give you an idea of what the fitman looks like, I think I'll drop the car down real quick just to show you. Oh yeah, Harrison, I was just gonna drop it down real quick. Okay. Just to like show what the fitman's currently at. Cause it's, uh, it's definitely not going according to plan, which is very unfortunate, but you know, we're, we're making do with what we have right now. So this will give you an idea right here. So you see with the negative camber, it naturally kind of bows in to the body. So I think this will be okay. It's not, you know, super great. It's still very, very, very close. I think even a fender roll here could be helpful, but I think naturally if I keep it at this ride height, it would be okay. But I think dropping it more is uh, gonna be a little bit of a liability. But the rear 
I mean, Harrison, you see the rear, it's, this is absolutely insane. You, you can't even fit a credit card in here. And even if we rolled this, pancaked it flat, I was trying to justify it myself, thinking, oh, oh we would just roll this flat, but I just don't think that that's gonna be possible. It would really ruin the tire, and it's also very dangerous also. Because if you hit a bump or anything, it's, it's kaboom. It's, it's gonna ruin the wheel and tire. So if it was just like a work of art and we were just like looking at it, it looks cool, for sure. Yeah, I know, it looks really sweet, but it's just not gonna work. Like, I wish I could just leave it here. I think I like looking at it, but for uh, us to be able to call this done is absolutely not, not. Yeah, is we're gonna max out the camber on this side to match the fronts. We'll run the fronts, take it around the block, see how it is, and then uh, you guys will probably get an update from us the next day. I'm scared to lower it a bit more. I know that I probably could, but I mean, oh my goodness. Goodness gracious. I, I think these are gonna work. It's close though, it's really. Oh my God though, this stance is <laughs> Yeah, it, it'll be worth it. I promise it'll be worth it. And once you get an E36 or E46 too, like you've already done the trial run. So we can speed run it next time. <laughs> okay, so it's the next day. We're back here at Ant's Community Garage, and this is gonna be day two of getting these wheels and tires to fit. This is just kind of the reality of working on cars. Sometimes things don't go according to plan. So I drove this back. It was actually pouring rain last night. I didn't experience any rubbing issues in the front. This is full maxed out negative camber, and it seems to be going okay. So I think for now, we don't have to do too much. I looked into the forms last night and it looks like for people to run the rears on these, you have to do a very aggressive fender roll in the rear and you also have to run negative camber. But I think the solution since uh, the eccentric nut isn't gonna give us as much adjustment as we would like, we'll probably have to go back here and spend some time cutting. So the idea is that we'll have to cut this little lip that goes on the inside of the fender liner and then be able to fold that in and then be able to run such an aggressive wheel without having to run into any major issues. Even if we were to flatten this down like a pancake, you still run the, the risk of having a lot of rubbing issues. You could monster truck it and raise the whole entire car up, but I think in this case to do it right, especially if you want to take it to the track, there's just gonna be like a lot of diving corners and things of that sort, which is probably gonna lead to more issues down the road. This is gonna be a much more viable solution for us on the long term. Also with rolling the fenders in the front just very slightly and maybe even removing the fender liners might have to be something that we do. But what's nice with these ECS tuning coilovers is the fact that we can actually use the dampening adjustment to actually tighten that up a lot in the front. So now what we'll do is get this up in the air. We'll take the, the wheel and tire off and uh, start masking things off in this case so that nothing gets compromised on the actual paintwork itself on the outside but really just focus on what's happening behind the scenes so that we can run the big thick boys. So let's do it. So just to show you guys, this is a little test spot of the tape. And this is gonna be the line to which we're gonna try and hold this at. I'll probably go over with a, a Sharpie here just to give you guys a better glimpse of what this is actually gonna look like once we start cutting in. We'll end this right here right at the bumper it maybe have to go in on this side a little bit as well, but it's all really dependent on how this all turns out. So we'll go all the way along this line, on both sides of the rear. Not gonna touch the fronts right now. See how it goes.
Okay, one eternity later, we cut. This whole lip is gone. As you can see, this is on the passenger side. And now we're gonna go to the driver's side. I'll show you that as well, actually. So this is the first time for me, I've never actually done something like this before where I trim the whole inner part of the fender, but I stayed on the line. Now it's just gonna be a matter of uh, making sure that this is nice and smooth. And now I'll take the fender roller, smooth this out, and then I should be able to, to fit the wheel back on there. I'm just using a round file right here. Finally, got the fitment dialed in, I think. Before it was like maybe an inch in, but now I can, I can feel where the suspension will travel on this side, as well as on this side. Oh my goodness, man. A lot of space here. The only thing that I'm a little concerned about is this back little tab. And I still need to do something about the rear bumper because it was tapped in the rear if you look at it, especially in this corner. I think this is where the point of impact was. I think it was when I bought it from the teenagers. It's always been like that, but I, I need to pull this out because I see a little bit of the panel gap that's happening right here. So I think maybe like a hydraulic ram in the trunk, take everything out, pull it out this way. But man, it's mean. It is very, very aggressive. And I think I can finally drive it now. So I'll take it out here in a sec. Okay guys, so it's been a couple days now and I'm actually back in the shop. And I'm not sure how well this is gonna pick up on camera, but you're just gonna have to trust me that right now the rain situation outside is terrible. And it's been like this for the past couple days. And it's not like the light casual rain that we typically get here. As you know, the majority of my videos tend to be in the rain. So maybe it's just perfect timing in that case. But when you go outside, it actually feels like you're being pelted with little water droplets. And I don't want to sound like a complete wimp, but it's just a very miserable environment to work on cars right now. But I did want to provide you guys with an update on the BMW E36 convertible. So last night, actually CY and Ray helped me out with uh, getting on the new piece for the car. And then we also changed the oil in Ray's car and we just kind of treated it like a little bit of a hangout but I've been working really hard on this car for the past couple days. And as you might've even noticed that I haven't been uploading as much as I usually am. I am trying to find a good balance as to what feels good for me right now. And I feel like I wanna make more of an investment in the long form content since we have so many different things going on. So I think the style that I'm gonna be shooting in for the next couple of videos is just more of me picking up the camera and talking with you guys and asking for your guys' feedback. Because at the end of the day, I think the most important to me, thing to me right now, at least, is just you guys in the community. And I wanna keep developing that. So this will be the, another update for the car. I think that there's a lot of things that could be covered in this one, but I think that the best thing I can do is at least provide you guys with what I have right here, right in front of me. So as you're gonna see, this car has a hard top. <laughs> so I recently went out and I've been uh, talking with this guy for maybe the past two months or so. He's uh, pretty active in the drift scene and I recognized his car when I pulled up to his driveway. So it was really cool to meet him in person and he had this in the back of the shed and we decided to come to an agreement that I would pick this thing up. I was really just going to take a look at it, but I think what really sold me is once we tried it on, I was like, I immediately fell in love. The E36 convertible, even though they do look good in a soft top variation, it just looks like with the hard top that it really completes the look. It almost looks like a coupe. But you'll notice with the convertible is that with the coupe, it, it's all like seamlessly going into the body. But since this is a convertible, the back end of it almost has like these shoulders 
that come into here and then that's where the beginning of the hard top starts to happen. But this is no hard top that's 100% perfect. On the exterior, the condition of the paint is really good. I believe this is a Cosmos Schwartz Metallic. It's like a, a very dark shade of black. And uh, I can't remember what the exact name of the paint is for this one. I'll have to look at the, the front strut tower over here and we can take a peek. So yes, this is a Cosmos Schwartz Metallic. So, okay, so it's a perfect match. This is something that is very hard to find these days, but the, the most cumbersome thing that I'm slowly learning about this is that it's very difficult to take this top off by yourself. Now, if you have another person here, a two-person job or even a three-person job, it makes it a lot better. This is not like a little Miata where you can take the hard, hard top off and it's so cute and you can put it to the side and store it somewhere. This, you kind of have to have a good place for it. And for now, I'm just kind of trying to navigate through it. But for the majority of the stuff, when it comes to the wheel and tire setup and getting this to a point for where it really feels dialed in, I think we've really nailed it. So with the Apex Arc 8s, this is a 17 by nine with a plus 30 offset squared off. A lot of people don't run the flat face setup, which I believe is like a 17 by eight and a half or a 17 by eight. And that doesn't lead you to any rubbing issues. And my goodness, I had to spend so much time to get these rear quarter panels and fenders to clear for these to be ran. So it's just something that I think is worth the sacrifice, especially if you want to go from a aesthetic standpoint, because that's really the definitive goal as to why you would go with the concave wheel. It's not to make things more difficult for you, but it's, it's to provide more of a contact patch because you have a wider wheel. And then on top of that, you get the aesthetics of the concave face, which in my opinion really transforms the car. I mean, from what it had before with the OEM wheels, they're not too bad, but the tires were just absolutely abysmal. And as you can see with the car right now, it's absolutely filthy. Like I said, if I go into the outside of the shop, it's just a huge rainy mess right now. But I will have to say that I wanna give a huge praise to these tires. And maybe it's just the fact that the tires were so bad on the uh, car before, but these Falcon Azenis FK460 all season tires are absolutely wonderful, especially in the rain. I was genuinely impressed at how much grip I had in the rain. And I think that made all the difference, especially around here. Yes, if you put your foot down, you can get the, the back end to slide, but that's with basically any E36. You can drive this and feel pretty confident in most situations that you'll be fine. Now with the coilovers, we've settled these in. These are the ECS tuning coilovers. I've had them on the car for about a couple weeks now. As you can see, I'm running max negative camber because we're gonna be taking this thing to an autocross. This is gonna be coming up next week. Uh, we'll be doing autocross, we'll be doing a photo shoot, and then I'll be doing a full coverage video uh, showing you guys and showcasing what we can do with this car with the new wheel and tire setup and suspension. So this will be a good opportunity to see how these perform. Even though they're an all season tire, they're a high performance all season tire. May, dare I even say an ultra high performance all season tire. So they should fare really well in any kind of conditions. The only thing that I'm very curious about is if the event's gonna be rainy or not, because I noticed that not too many people signed up. Usually with these kind of events, what will happen is you'll see a lot of people sign up in the summertime but around this time, it, it starts to slow down because people don't want to take their really nice cars out in the wet. Even though it's a, it's a safe racetrack, if you haven't had like enough seat time, it can be a little bit cumbersome for a lot of people to approach a situation like that, which is totally understandable. But in this case, with the E36, this is gonna be a really fun one. And I feel extremely grateful for the opportunity to do any of this stuff with the convertible because we've came a long way with this one, you know? I bought this on a whim after I sold the 318i sedan where I was absolutely distraught at the idea of getting rid of that car. But now that we have another E36 on the channel with the convertible, especially now with the hardtop, I am very in love with this thing. I, I really do like the car a lot and I feel really happy and really grateful that we get to go do stuff like this. Now the reason I have the lights up here is because I was actually doing uh, planning to do an oil change soon because that's gonna be kind of the next steps for me is just to slowly prepare this car. The one thing that I am a little bit scared about is not the rubbing in the front because I actually haven't experienced a lot of rubbing in the front, but sometimes when I go full lock, the fender liners, especially on this corner, 
come very close and they do rub. So I think what I'll have to do is kind of get this car up in the air and investigate that further. But the fender rolling went really, really smooth. There's no like major uh, paint cracking or anything like that on the outside. I do need to go back and maybe put some RTV uh, silicone sealant on the, on the back portion because of the fact that we had to cut this to roll it. Now that's completely optional. Uh, I see so many people, you know, they'll just grind down the lip that's on the, the rear quarter panel itself that goes into the wheel well and you should be able to get away with that with a pretty aggressive roll. But since I wanna track this car and I don't wanna deal with rubbing issues at all, this is kind of like a fail safe response to all that. And apologies that the, the lighting isn't super great right now. So let me grab a light to show you guys a little bit better, at least what it's currently looking like. So the, the brake rotors, they're starting to get there. It would be nice to do a refresh on the brakes. I think that, you know, this will be a good opportunity for us to see how they feel on track. But I have a feeling that there is definitely uh, more to be desired here. So maybe like a big brake upgrade could be pretty good. So maybe if uh, there's any E36 enthusiasts in the comments that have any ideas, I would definitely be open to that. But for what it is, man, it, it really came out awesome. I did want to take it out today to give you guys a little bit of a point of view drive like I typically do in my content. But I think I'm just gonna wait until the autocross event because I think that's gonna be the best situation to show you guys, you know, a full chatter what the E36 convertible can do. The first time that we took this out, it was absolutely hilarious. And I almost uh, gave CY a heart attack in the thing and they had to pull me over to the side and be like, hey, you gotta, you gotta settle down a little bit because this thing was very tail happy. So the one thing that I will say from driving the coupes and the sedans, uh, I've actually never driven a TI. So maybe that's the next one on the hit list of the E36 saga. But for anybody that's driven the sedans, it feels a lot lighter in the rear than the convertibles. So the convertibles theoretically are maybe around 200 pounds heavier. I'm not sure exactly what the exact weight is, but you can find that on the internet. And that's why people kind of shy away from the convertibles because they're a little bit more high maintenance. There's a little bit more weight, but theoretically it's all really the same E36. The nice thing with these ones too is that they have the bracing underneath from the factory, which kind of helps with the chassis rigidity. And it helps too that if you get a hard top like this, it helps bring on more rigidity to the chassis overall. Yes, you are adding more weight, so the car is gonna be heavier, but when you do this, when it, when it uh, cinches here in all four corners with the locking mechanisms, you know, it, it almost makes it feel as one. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very sturdy piece. I believe it's a piece of sheet metal that's lined with some fiberglass. And it even has the full defroster with the rear window. This one is tinted. I thought maybe I would remove the tint, but it's actually not too bad. But it needs restoration 100%. So the biggest thing that's happened to me now is that it's constantly leaking. Oh my God, what a disaster. So I had to find this out the hard way. So it was pouring rain just like a day on this. And then uh, I had to come outside and I saw that it was dripping right here at the A pillar. So what I did is I put some weather stripping in between here. And uh, we, we put the top back on and CY and Ray helped me out with that one. I got the mounting hardware in the rear because this convertible didn't have it. So we were actually using a ratchet strap like this and we just kind of cinched it down. But in this case, I think it should be okay. So the headliner, as you can see, it's uh, very droopy. And I know the lighting's not super great in here, but you're just gonna have to take my word for it that it is very droopy. But the fabric itself is in good shape. It just needs the adhesive to be put back on. And in terms of just like the difference too with the hard top is like the noise isolation is pretty tremendous, the, the difference. If it, again, it feels like a coupe. When you're on the highway, it's much quieter. The car overall is just much quieter and it makes it much more enjoyable to drive. So that's all I really got for this car right now. Like I said, I feel really appreciative of the opportunity. I wanna give a huge thanks to Ant's Community Garage, Apex Wheels, and Falcon Tires for being able to make all this stuff possible for us to really transform the E36 convertible into something else. But on top of that too, the reason I haven't been posting as much is because I also picked up another car for the channel. You guys aren't gonna believe it, man. We went out and we bought another car. I know, it's, it's a disaster. There's, there's too many cars now. I'm 100% I'm in maximum capacity. 
but I couldn't pass this one up and I think you guys are going to be genuinely shocked when I show you what I picked up. But anyways, I think I'm going to wrap up the video here. Stay tuned for the next video once we take this out to the Speedway. Make sure to check out my Patreon if you want to see more exclusive content and support the channel that way. We also have merch and I'll leave all the links down below. But anyways, thank you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.